Hey guys. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can refresh JSON Web Tokens for your ASP.NET Core Web API. Let's try to understand why do you have to refresh JSON Web Tokens for your application. So in typical scenarios, systems have authentication server and resource server. Whenever a user wants to log in into the system, they send username and password and authentication server checks if the username and password is does exist in the system or not and authentication request and sends the user back with JSON Web Token. Now it's client's responsibility to store this JSON Web Tokens because they need that token to make requests to the resource server. So whenever they want to get information from resource server, they put JSON Web Token in authorization header request and then resource server checks if the token which is received by the server is valid or not, it is signed by proper key or not, authorizes the request and sends the response back to the client. But you must have noticed from my last episode that these JSON Web Tokens have expiry dates. And these JSON Web Tokens should expire in few hours or at least less than a day. The reason why, because if a hacker gets access to this JSON Web Token, then they can pull information from your resource server for months. And that's pretty bad, right? But if these JSON Web Tokens are expiring in few hours, then our client won't be able to see any information on the screen because this is an expired JSON web token and resource server will send unauthorized status code back whenever you know client is trying to get information from resource server. And in some of the cases, they might even get kicked out of the system and they will have to re-log in every few hours to regenerate the refresh to get the JSON web token. And that's the reason why we have to refresh our JSON web tokens. So how do we do that? To do that, whenever user tries to log in into the system, authentication server should generate JSON Web Token and it should also generate a refresh token. And this refresh token doesn't really have to be a JSON Web Token, it could be any random string. And this refresh token can have a longer expiry time. It can go on for six months. But whenever authentication server generates this refresh token, it should save in the database. It should save uh, along with the user ID and the expiry time of the refresh web token. And whenever you have this JSON web token generated by the authentication server and refresh token, it will be sent back to the client. And it's client responsibility to store both the tokens in the local storage or whatever client that you're using. So whenever the token expires, the JSON web tokens expire, then client can send the JSON web token and refresh token back to the authentication server. So even if the JSON web token which is expired, authentication server can get information from that expired JSON web token. And it will check in the database if the refresh web token which is sent along with the expired JSON web token is valid or not in the database. And if it's valid, then they will generate, authentication server will generate another JSON web token and back, sends it back to the client. And then client should update the local storage with the refreshed JSON web token and use that token to get information from our resource server. So to achieve this, we're gonna follow some steps. But before I jump into the steps, I would like to show you how I've set up the demo. So I already have this client, which, um, which is a Blazor client. I'm going to use my Blazor application to show you the demo. And whenever I log in, whenever I log in, my server, my, my user controller, my API, generates a JSON web token, which expires in seven seconds. So let's see what happens after login and after seven seconds. So when I log in into the system, I can pull information from the pages, but I can only do that for next seven seconds. And now you can see that it's expiring now and I can't get any information from my API. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to 
uh, follow these steps. We're going to generate refresh token, uh, make an API call to refresh the JSON web token, and make an API from our Blazor application. So let's look, jump into our code. Okay, um, before I get started with coding, um, I would like to just say that I'll be jumping around these files. And if you're not following, then you can go back and watch the CDs. Um, otherwise, you can just ask questions in the comment section. So uh, in our last episode, we did generate JSON Web Token. We now have to generate the refresh token for our user. Um, before I generate a refresh token, I would like to change something in my JSON Web Token. Um, instead of passing email address in my claims, I'm going to pass uh, email uh, user ID as, uh, as the name identity, the cl claims identity. Uh, it's because um, I would like my system to handle uh, Facebook login, Twitter, Google login. So, um, and in that case, email address is not unique. Uh, you know, people could log in with their different accounts with the same email address. And the user ID which gets generated in the system is auto-incremented, so that's going to be unique for all the users. So I'm going to assign that as my claims identity when user logs in into the system. Sweet. Now let's go ahead and um, and generate our refresh token. So um, for that, I'm going to create a table. The reason why I'm creating a table is because I want my users to be able to log in with the different devices. And if I add a column in my user table to store refresh token, uh, I don't think that's that will be possible. So I'm going to create a table which will be associated with the user. And uh, whenever user logs in, we'll add a refresh token into our uh, refresh token table, which will be associated with user table. So I'm going to say um, uh, I want a new query. And I have already written the script for creating the table. It's very simple. Um, it says uh, refresh token. It creates um, it creates a token ID which is um, auto incremented. It's a uh, user ID which is foreign key with the uh, with the user table, and it has token of course and the expiry date for the token. Let's run this. And you can uh, you know I'm using database first approach. You can use um, uh, code first approach. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. So that script will create a table, table in my database. Uh, I'm gonna use scaffold db context command to um, scaffold db context command to create class for for the table that we just generated. Sweet. So if you can go to your models folder, you can see that it created a refresh token, which is token ID, user ID. Uh, token expiry date and the user and if I go to my user class you can see that now we have collection of refresh tokens nice let's go back to our login screen where we would like to um, generate a refresh token and um, um, save it into a database whenever we find a user whenever we find valid user when user pass email address and password Okay, for that, I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it as private function, which returns refresh token. And I'm going to say that it's um, it's called as refresh, generate refresh token. And it doesn't really need any parameter because, you know, we just want to generate the refresh token. Um, so I'm going to create an instance of refresh token and um, I'll pass it back so that it doesn't give us error here sweet so uh, like i said you can have your own logic uh, for the token that you're generating uh, i'm gonna use um, 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 a random number generator which will uh, which will assign uh, some random number and then we will then i'm gonna use a convert base to base string uh, base string function to um, uh, and generate the random string. <clears throat> so um, for that, I'm gonna say random random number generator, which will be uh, new bytes, uh, which will be new bytes will be of size 32. And I'm gonna say using 
I'm going to use here a random uh, number generator class to create these random numbers. Um, so I'm going to say random number generator. Um, create. And this class is located in um, in system security cryptography. So you can, you know, add, you, you can also use this class. And then I'm going to say random number generator please get some random bytes for the random number variable that I just created. And then I'm gonna convert convert that to base string and uh, pass random number generator which has some random bytes. And this string I'm going to assign to my refresh token. Refresh token, please assign this convert uh, base64 string to it. Okay, now that we have refresh token, I'm gonna say refresh token. Um, you need to have expiry date too. So I'm gonna say expiry date should be date time dot uh, UTC now dot uh, add six months. So um, yeah, this uh, refresh token can go on for months, unlike our JSON web tokens. And we will use this refresh token to refresh our JSON web token. Sweet. So um, now our generate uh, refresh token function is ready. Let's go ahead and call this function um, when user finds a valid uh, valid user in our database. So I'm gonna say um, refresh token um, in instance of refresh token, please call our function which will generate the refresh token. And the user that I found in my database, I'm gonna uh, add refresh tokens, uh, refresh tokens, the token that we just created in our database, so that uh, it will get saved in our database. To save, I'm gonna call context save changes async, so that that will get saved in our database. So we found the valid user, we generated refresh token for it, we added that refresh token for that user, and then we are saying, please save that in our database. Nice. And we will also have to assign this refresh token to the uh, to the instance that we're sending back to the client. So if you see that in my last episode, I did generate, uh, I created access token, which is JSON, uh, JWT token. Uh, just like that, we'll have to create a refresh token and send it back to the client so that a client can save that um in um uh, in the local storage so let's go ahead and say that uh user with token you will also have to have refresh token which will be refresh token instance that we just created of token sweet let's let's run this and see if um when user logs in and uh, is it creating refresh token and saving in the database or not so I'm gonna run this, sweet. And I think my client is already running. So I'll go back to my client and say log out, log back in. And then if I go to my API, go to my server and see data in my refresh token, you can see that it created a token for user 44, who is John Smith. And it's set expiry date as August 1st, 2020, six months from now. Um, so yeah, that's how you create a um, refresh token and save it into database. And whenever your JSON web, point, web token expires, you use this token for, uh, for checking if the user is valid or not. So that's where the next step is. API call to refresh token, just like our login uh, login API call will have to create an API call in our controller to refresh our JSON web token. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we will have to create uh, that API just like we have login API. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to put my, uh, my code for creating the JSON web token in a function so that I can use it in my login API and in my refresh token API. So I'm going to copy this piece of code. I'm going to copy this piece of code. I'm going to actually cut it and uh, put in a function 
put in a function and say that it's a private function which returns string and it's called as generate um, access token access token and it takes um, an integer user ID I'm gonna paste that code in here so that we can reuse this code in this class um, and this will take a uh, user ID now because we do not have user here and this will return instead of assigning so I'm gonna say return user return the string which you just created and before you return the user when you log in it's a user with token um, should have the access um, token which is generated so I'm gonna pause um, user user the user ID here nice okay so now we have this uh, we have two classes we have two functions um, one is uh, generate refresh token and other is generate access token so generate we'll have to use this generate access token in our refresh uh, refresh token API so let's go ahead and create that API first so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this and paste it here and uh, uh, this will return me um, return me user with token but this is going to be a request for uh, for refreshing the token so I'm gonna say uh, you can refresh your tokens here so I'm gonna say refresh token refresh token and I'm gonna return null as of now so that it doesn't throw me errors um so now we won't uh you know we'll we can't take user we'll we'll have to take a request we'll have to take an object in the body which will have access token and refresh token so that we can <clears throat> so that we can uh, take the uh, access token and uh, take the expired access token and check if um, that access token is actually signed by our api or not and if it is signed then we will check the refresh token which has been signed sent by the client actually belongs to the same user or not so um i'm going to create a class i'm going to create a class and say that it's a um refre uh, refresh request refresh request that's what we would like to take um and um this will take uh this will have access ID and refresh token just like the user that we are sending back. So I'm going to put these two fields here for refresh request. It will have access token and refresh token. Um, and I'm going to go back to my user client and instead of user, we would like refresh request. And let's change the name here so that we don't get confused. Okay, so we are taking a refresh request object for refreshing our token this token will need to this api call will need to do two things one is we would like our user from our uh, from our access token so i'm going to create a function called as get user from access token access token which will take a uh, refresh requests access token which is signed sent by the client and um, we will also create another function which will check first we'll check if the user is not null which has been uh, you know which we get it from our access token which is expired which is should not be null and we'll have to validate um validate uh, refresh token refresh token which will take a uh, user and it will also take uh, a refresh refresh token which is sent by the sent by the client so i'm going to say take both of these things and validate and this will send the user back so uh let's first create these functions i'm gonna use my visual studio to create these functions and you should also create yourself Sweet. So we have this um, get user uh, get user from access token expired access token. Um, so this part is going to be tricky. Um, so stay with me. I'm gonna first create um, a token handler. 
which I am going to copy from from my get access token. So I'm gonna copy this token handler and the key that that's what I'm gonna need to get the user from my access token. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put these two things here and then I'm gonna uh, use my token handler. I'm gonna use my token handler to validate the token. And if you look at this function, it takes token and then it takes token validation parameters, the parameters that we use for validating the access tokens which are getting or which we receive from our clients. And then it takes an out parameter of a security token. So um, let's let's first uh, let's first get these variables and then we will pass these variables into our edit token. So uh, the validation parameters, we can get it from our token parameter here uh, that from our startup class that we use for adding the better. Uh, and I'm going to put it in my user controller here and say that this is um, this is a var token, a var token validation. And then I'm going to create a um, um, security token, security token. Um, and I'm not going to assign it because this is going to be an out parameter. So I'm going to pass the access token to when I validate. And one thing to notice here, this token handler returns claims principles. So we'll have to catch that too. So I'm going to copy my access token, pass it to validate token. And then I'm going to get the token validation parameters, pass it to validate token. And then I'm going to get a out parameter and pass it to uh, my validated token so that we get it and then i'm gonna get um, this all in my principle principle sweet so now um now what we did we validated our token this is this is an expired jwt token um and we are validating if it's signed by the same uh same key that's been used for our api and we will uh, confirm that using the security token which has been passed in the uh, in the function. So to do that, I'm gonna uh, say that if um, first we'll have to convert this security token into JWT token. So I'm gonna say that JWT security token is equal to security token security token as JWT JWT security token nice and then i'm gonna check if the security token is is not null and um it matches the headers header has the same algorithm same algorithm as the algorithm that we used for assigning the key so to do that i'm gonna um, get that algorithm when i uh, generate the access key so i'm gonna get the security algorithm the security algorithm put it here and then i'm gonna get the string say the same comparison is invalid um in a uh, culture ignorance ignorance case and once i do that then we have a valid token even if it's expired we know that the uh the token is valid because it's been signed by the same api okay so now we do have um uh, we do have the security token. Let's return null here. Um, yeah, let's return null here because I don't want to throw exception if I don't find anything. I'll return null. And um, so now we found uh, the security token, uh, which is expired. It, it's using the same algorithm. It's using the same key for signing it. And we would like to get the ID of the user uh, who actually signed it. So I'm going to say var user ID, var user ID is equal to principal, uh, find first, and we'll have to get claims, claim types here. I think we used name, and if it's not null, then we would like to get the value of it. Sweet. And here, uh, if we have the correct user ID, then I would like to um get the user from our database so i'm going to say where user 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 id is equal equal to 
um this is um we'll have to convert this is a string if you look at this this is a string so we'll have to convert into integer so i'm going to convert uh, that to integer and here i'm going to pass user id sweet so now we are uh, what we're doing is we got the expired token from our client and now we checked if you know it was a valid token or not if it used the same key or not if it uses the same algorithm or not if it did we got the principal we got the user id from the principal and we are returning the same um we'll have to get the first guy here so we'll have to get first our default and that should to fix the problem and then we got the got the user from the database so we have we wrote the function get user from access token expire access token and which we will um so we should be able to get the user um back to back to us okay so we managed to write this function which um took the access token expired got the user if user is not null then validate this refresh token with our database so um here i'm going to say return false uh, because i'm pessimistic and um here um, i would like to check in my database if i actually um, do have the refresh token or not so i'm going to say with all the refresh tokens that i have i would like to check if this refresh token does exist in my database or not so i'm going to say um rt token is um, equal equal to refresh token nice and uh, i would like to get the latest token so let's order by order by descending and uh, i would like to order by order by the expiry date um and then get the first or default so this will give me a refresh token it'll give me a refresh token uh for that user for that user and we will have to um and we will have to check if the refresh token matches the user id of uh, the refresh token which has been signed by the client so um first thing that i'm going to check if the refresh token uh, for the user is not null of course and um and the refresh token uh for the user um, has the same user ID as the user that I'm passing in the function and also I would I would like to check if the expiry date of the refresh token is more than today's date because we do not want to um, send the expired refresh token you know so refresh tokens expiry date should be more than um date time dot uh, utc now sweet so when this is good when this validation is good then i'm going to say return true sweet then return so and um so what we did here we got the refresh token uh for the refresh token that client had sent um and we checked th with the user that we found from the access token and uh, if we find that, then what we like to do, we would like to send a user back to the client with refreshed access token. To do that, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, user with token. User with token is a new token and new user token. I'm gonna pass user in here so that it can assign all the values to it. And um, user with token. Um, it should have a new new access token so I'm gonna pass user ID here I'm gonna say user ID for this user ID create a refresh token and then pass this guy back to the client awesome right so this is how you can get user of expired access token check in your database if the user that you got from access token actually matches the refresh token which has been sent by the client and it's not expired and then generate a new access token for that same user because all the validations are done 
and sends it back to the user and that's how you can refresh token so from for our client side all the coding is done now i am going to go back to my uh, for the api side all the coding is done um api side all the coding is done for a fresh client and now we'll have to make that api call api call from our blazor application so let's let's go ahead and do that okay so on the client side um we will first have to store the refresh token that we get from our uh, login async so this login async calls our api and generates the access token and refresh token so i would like to store that refresh token on the um on my local storage so that i can use it in multiple places so i'm gonna say that it's a refresh token it's a refresh token and you should create another property for your user on the client side to store uh, refresh tokens i have already done that um, and this will, so whenever I log in, I will have both access token and refresh token in my local storage. Sweet. So let's go ahead and, um, um, add, add a function into our, our, I, I user service, like login async. We'll have to add another function to make that refresh token call. So I'm going to call it as, um, refresh token refresh token async refresh token async and instead of taking user this is going to take a refresh request just like here refresh request so let's let's go ahead and um, create that class so i'm gonna go ahead and add that class and this class will have the same fields as as this class so i'm gonna copy some code from here and paste it here and we will pass the same same class uh, in our uh, refresh token here so i'm going to pass that change the name of the object and let's go ahead and um, implement this function in our user service so i'll go to user service and uh, implement the interface which will create this oh, i'll have to add async here so that it's happy uh, and i'm going to copy the code for login only there are a couple of things that i have to change one is we are uh, serializing uh, refresh token now not uh, um, not user and we'll have to call refresh token we'll have to call refresh token not login here whenever we make the call sweet so we have our user service ready to make a refresh token call um i'm gonna call this function i'm gonna assume that every time author list is empty uh it's because uh, our our um our token has been expired so uh, i'm gonna assume that you should uh write proper code where you know you get a proper response like uh, you know the author is unauthorized the request is unauthorized or your token is expired something like that and i'm not gonna write that code i'm just gonna show you how you can uh, how you can call this refresh token function and see how the tokens are getting refreshed okay so i'm gonna use user service here user service and i'm gonna call refresh token um uh, function which takes ref refresh request so let's go ahead and create instance of refresh request and a new instance new instance um uh, so we'll have to pass uh we'll have to assign uh, the access token and refresh token from our local storage so i'm going to say um refresh token that we are passing um the access token should come from uh, uh should come from uh, local storage and instead of setting I would like to get the access token. I'm gonna copy that and paste it here. And instead of set, I would like to call get. And it's gonna be uh, an async function. So I'm gonna put an await keyword in front of it. It returns um, string. Nice. Um, and same will do that same will do it for refresh token refresh token 
refresh token and get the same value from from local search sweet so now we have a refresh request ready we'll pass that this will return us a user which will uh, which will have uh, which will have the um, it's an await oh, we'll have to put await keyword here which will have a refreshed token now so this will uh, this will go to our api and say that okay we have uh, uh, we have a uh, refreshed um, uh, we have a uh, 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 access token which has been expired and we would like to we would like to refresh our token and please take this refresh token which we have which has longer expiry time so i'm gonna um i'm gonna call this function and once i do that then we will have to get the refresh token from a user one and put it into our local storage. So I'm gonna say local storage set item set item access token access token and then get value from user one which was returned by which was returned by our refresh token async. Oh so access token get it from here. Nice. And this is going to be an await keyword. Nice. Uh, and once we have our access token refreshed in our local storage, then we will call our book service um, uh, function again so that it uh, it will use the refreshed access token and it won't give us that user is unauthorized error. Okay, let's let's run this and see if this works. So I'm gonna run my client. So when I started the demo, my access token, it was, um, it was expiring in seven seconds and I was not able to see any, any information after seven seconds. So let's see if we can see this information for longer than seven seconds. So you can see that now it's, now it's pulling information even after seven seconds. Let's, let's check our console. So if I if I keep an eye on my access token and if I like move to a different page, you can see that my access token is getting updated every seven seconds. It's getting refreshed every seven seconds. And that's how you know hackers can't just like have an access token and keep on pulling information from your from your API. I know this this tutorial was kind of tricky, so if you have any questions, um you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.